it's kind of like being a felon. It's on your record, right? Like you go back to the optometrist, they see you had a cylinder correction. When they, when they do your so-called exam, they automatically put whatever you had in the last one in there for a start. Welcome back. Let's talk today briefly about genetic astigmatism versus lens-induced astigmatism, mainly because it came up in email twice today. And while I generally don't give case-specific advice in email, I do collect questions that come up often and try to make blog post videos, explanations for it whenever possible. So even if I don't give you specific advice when you send an email, realize that it counts towards the volume of things that decide what I comment on. So astigmatism, pretty simple. In most cases, astigmatism is lens-induced. Um, I've talked to several ophthalmologists over in the past. There's a blog post or several on this. Actual astigmatism, real astigmatism is exceedingly rare relative to the amount of astigmatism and the frequency of astigmatism, so-called prescription that you get at the optometrist. Now, why that is, it's just the nature of the exam. If you've ever been measured for glasses, you know the machine they put in front of your eyes that dials in various stoppers, has a wheel in it for astigmatism correction to add cylinder correction. So as part of a regular exam, they will just, they will do spherical adopters, right? Just straight myopia. And they will also adjust the, the cylinder adopters and ask you, can you see better this way or that? And if you can't tell the difference, or if unfortunately you say, yeah, this seems better, even if you can't quite tell the difference, then you very easily may wind up with a little bit of astigmatism correction, which the optometrist is trained to think is a good idea to just correct you for every possible thing. And so you may wind up with a little bit of cylinder correction. Now, the problem with that is <clears throat> it's kind of like being a felon. It's on your record, right? Like you go back to the optometrist, they see you had a cylinder correction when they when they do your so-called exam, they automatically put whatever you had in the last one in there for a start. So if you had cylinder in your last correction, even if you didn't need it just because you said, yes, this looks better, it's now already in there. Like it's in there by default. And their assumption is, and this is bizarre, but true, they assume that you need more of everything. So the first thing you do when you go back to get an eye exam is, and say you're a minus three doctors and you have a diopter of astigmatism, they put in the minus three and they put in the diopter of astigmatism and then they dial it up. That's always how it works. So they go to minus 3.25 and they're like, is that sharper? And if you've not had new glasses in a year, it probably is because lens induced myopia. And you're like, yeah, wow, that's better. And then they add also 0.25 of astigmatism. And if that doesn't make your vision worse, they're gonna probably leave it in. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is not the case at every optometrist in every country in every scenario, but it's a very likely one. And when people ask me how they wound up with two diopters of cylinder correction, well, that's how. You didn't say, no, 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 I don't like that because you didn't know it was cylinder correction. They didn't tell you. And even if you didn't really notice any difference, if you didn't say your vision was worse with it, then you're probably getting it. And that sucks. And that's how lens-induced astigmatism happens. <clears throat> and that's why when I get emails asking about astigmatism reversal, usually my question is, do you have your history of so-called prescriptions? And if you see a trend of lower cylinder or no cylinder to begin with, and then increasing cylinder, that's a pretty strong sign that it's lens-induced. And if it's lens-induced, it's reversible. If it's lens-induced, it's created by the stimulus of those cylinder lenses. Your stigmatism is created by the lenses, so you can reverse it by reducing your dependence on the, on the lenses gradually and slowly slowly, especially with cylinder. Do you want to be extra conservative with cylinder? If you have several minus diopters of spherical diopters, reduce, start reducing that first, get one or two reductions, get used to the right habits, get used to active focus, and then add a little bit of cylinder reduction with it. Ideally, a test lens kit's really handy because then you can measure how much cylinder correction you really need. For close-up, you need less cylinder than for distance. So you'd start up with reducing your cylinder for close-up and then reduce your cylinder for distance. These are like kind of long topics. Again, if you're new to this, you don't want to monkey around with lenses. You want to read a lot first. You want to watch a lot of videos first. You want to get a hang of really how diopter changes affect your vision. 
realizing that a little goes a long way you just want a little bit of stimulus if it's a complex correction right like if the ratio of cylinder to spherical if it's pretty high then you really want to look at the cylinder more closely because it may slow down progress if you don't uh, in cases like that a test lens kit or a friendly optometrist who will work with you is really handy sometimes behavioral optometrists are nice sometimes just a local optometrist who's open-minded and understands the science can be handy to put a test lens kit on you for close-up first and see how much can you reduce that cylinder before you get directional blur if you have two diopters of cylinder maybe you can get half a diopter lower just as an example with the test lens kit and if you still don't see directional blur that half diopter plays no role, doesn't benefit you. So you have them dial it down until you see a little bit of directional blur close up where you need less cylinder than for distance and you go, okay, that's good, right? Little bit of challenge because realize that a little bit of challenge in those five minutes that you're wearing a test lens kit or two minutes that you're wearing a test lens kit spread out over eight hours of a whole day is a lot of challenge. So you want a little bit because what feels like a little bit right now, after two hours, it's gonna give you headaches. You want a little bit, right? Like you start noticing all directional blur, that's good. For distance, you probably need more cylinder. And again, a little goes a long way. You're in no hurry. It takes at least three to four months to notice any changes with, with cylinder reductions. It's, it can be longer, it's more challenging, it's better to be in a flow of doing spherical reduction and getting spherical improvements first so then you're already on a good track to do cylinder reductions. Most importantly here, if you already started out with three diopters of cylinder to begin with in your first correction ever, then maybe it's not lens induced. Like maybe there is some condition, some issue. You know, get your cornea checked out, go to an ophthalmologist, see what your eye actually looks like because they can measure the astigmatism. They can print you out a visual of the shape of your cornea and whether the astigmatism is something that's maybe really three diopters significant and that lens correction may not correct effectively. You can still try it, but you wanna be able to tell, okay, this is a likely scenario because it's just lens induced or it's a much less likely scenario because there's actually something odd in the shape of my cornea. For most people, it's gonna be lens induced. But again, here, you don't wanna watch this video and it's like the first video you've seen and immediately go change a bunch of diopters. I always say, take a month, take two months, take however much time and read. Learn a lot first because once you're making changes to your focal plane, the whole system cascading will react to this. So you wanna make sure that it's the right kind of change. Otherwise you just end up with headaches and it's counterproductive and you're gonna get frustrated. So more reading ahead of time is always a good idea. And figuring out your so-called prescription history of where you started, how long ago you started, what it looked like in the beginning, because ultimately when you're headed back towards 2020, you're replaying that whole prescription so-called history in reverse for the most part. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about this. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Keep sending me questions because questions help me figure out what you guys need answers to. And then I'll see you in the next one. Meow, 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 meow.